Hi, my name is Dan Bullard. Uh, I'm a retired electrical engineer, electronics engineer. I worked mostly in the uh, automated test in industry, um, testing everything from op amps to Intel microprocessors. I was there for first silicon for the Pentium 3. Um, I did um, a lot of mixed signal devices, a lot of memory devices, mixed signal devices, analog devices, all kinds of crazy chips. Um, and uh, uh, I've done a lot of things that a lot of people don't do. Um, I love to experiment with things and having testers, semiconductor testers at my fingertips let me do a lot of things that most people don't understand. Now, I'm here to talk about harmonics. Harmonics are created by distortions in a wave. Um, harmonics can be a problem. If you're trying to test harmonics, you want to test THD, and that's about all as far as Wikipedia and anybody else goes. Is measuring THD, you're going to take the square root of the sum of the squares, whoop de fucking do. Okay, so you can add, you can take a, you can multiply something by itself, and then you can take the square root. I'm so impressed. That's not the big deal. THD is crap anyway, and that's part of the point of my book, is that THD really doesn't tell you anything. What you're really looking for is the linearity of the device, and THD doesn't tell you how linear or nonlinear the device is. And that's a problem. Now it does tell you something about how the device will sound in an audio application, but it doesn't tell you anything else. So I'm here to talk to you about how harmonics are created. All the crap out there, forget it. It's garbage. Nobody knows, nobody knows how it works except me. And if you read my books, you. Now, you don't just have to read my books. You can read my articles on LinkedIn. Those are free. Or you can go to my website, www.dambuller.com, and poke around. You'll find my articles on DSP. But harmonics are created when you run into a nonlinearity. Nonlinearity creates some problem in the waveform, and that creates harmonics. Sort of. In fact, the harmonics create the distortion. It's almost a chicken and egg thing. You don't really know which one came first. So you can't have a distortion in a sine wave without harmonics. You just can't. It can't happen. If you take out all the harmonics, guess what? You're back at a sine wave. Guaranteed. I can prove it a million ways from someday. And I do in many of my articles. So, harmonics come from distortions or nonlinearities in the wave. So that happens. It has certain rules, and I cover the rules. They're laws, actually, laws of physics. Um, the biggest one probably is, and it's important to remember, that when you do an FFT, FFT tells you what's going on. It's based on Fourier. Fourier was right. Nobody ever asserted that Fourier is wrong. The FFT gives you the amplitudes of something that happens, the area enclosed in some area, in some thing. So if you have nothing but a sine wave, you get one single line in the spectrum, and that tells you the amplitude of the FF of the uh, sine wave. But if you have a distortion, you'll get harmonics that pop up in the FFT, in the spectrum. And the amplitudes of those harmonics are proportional to the area that was distorted. Proportional to the area. And that's law number one of Bullard Laws of Harmonics. And yes, I shamelessly named them after myself. Who else would I name them after? Bruce Tibbetts? Forget it. I ain't going to do it. Um, another one that's really interesting, and nobody else knows this, is that the pattern 
of harmonics that comes out. There's a definite mathematical pattern. Once, when I was working at Maxim with a friend of mine who had a master's degree, he had a problem. And so we pulled up a spectrum analyzer and looked at this signal. And I saw these really cool humping patterns. And I said, Terry, what is that? He says, oh, it's just some artifacts happening. Bullshit. It was mathematical, and you could tell. He had no idea. When a master's degree guy has no idea what's happening, you know you're on to something. So that pattern comes about because of the angle where your sine wave was when it hit that distortion. If you change the angle, you change the pattern of the harmonics. Okay? If the angle moves, the harmonic pattern will change. I call that the harmonic signature. And that's law number two. That is unknown to anybody. If you know that, you can blow people away. And that's my goal, is to get your career supercharged by letting you go in and show people that they're idiots. Because they are. They're morons. Okay. Thirdly, you'll find out that even harmonics go away if you have perfect symmetry. If you have perfect symmetry in a wave, and that's what my Apple Coast video shows, you get no even harmonics. And the reason for that is pretty interesting. Even harmonics help prevent a distortion from happening on one side or the other. And so, if you have perfect symmetry, you'll get no even harmonics. But if you have any asymmetry, the even harmonics will appear. But they're not created by the asymmetry. The even harmonics were there, but if the asymmetry happens on just the positive side, the even harmonics show up in one phase. If the asymmetry happens on the negative side, the even harmonics show up on the other polarity. And if it happens on both top and bottom, perfectly symmetrical, then the even harmonics are there, but they cancel each other out. And that's the right way to look at it. There are other ways that people talk about it, but they're full of crap. Okay, law number four says that the even harm, or sorry, that the, when you clip a wave, when you chop like the top of a wave off, if you look at the harmonic pattern from that sine wave with the chopped, the top chopped off the bottom or the top, whatever, and then compare that to the spectrum of what you chopped off, they'll be the same. The pattern of harmonics will be the same, except that the phases are completely reversed. Now that's really interesting, because what that means is you can restore a wave back to its normal state by crushing the harmonics, whatever they are, getting rid of all the harmonics and putting the waveform back to the way it was. Okay, And then finally, something that I discovered relatively late, and so it's not even in this book, is that Law 5, the phases of the harmonics. You go ask any dickhead with a degree, what are the phases of the harmonics for a distorted wave? They have no idea. No idea. They can't even begin to guess. But guess what? It's really simple. If you start with a sine wave, when you get the harmonics out, the harmonics will be at 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees relative to the fundamental. That's it. There's only those four values. Now, there's a corollary called Daver's Law, because I went and talked to my buddy Daver, Dave Reynolds, and he discovered that if you go with a cosine wave, it's even simpler. If you start with a cosine wave, the harmonics exist in only two flavors, zero degrees or 180 degrees, period. There's no other choices. So if you can capture a wave such that it, the fundamental is a sine wave, and it's easy enough to do that actually, 
then you'll only, your harmonics will only exist at 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees. And if you capture it, just basically slide it over, slide the wave over 90 degrees, then the harmonics will only exist in two flavors, 0 degrees and 180 degrees. That's it. That is a really interesting thing because when you calculate something ridiculous like THD, which is, it's ridiculous. It's square root of the sum of squares. Big fucking deal. But if you measure the phases of the harmonics, then you'll know whether that harmonic was created or that signal was created by a distortion or by something else. Very often when you're trying to debug a problem, you're trying to troubleshoot a problem, you'll find out that not everything that looks like a harmonic actually is a harmonic. And that's one of my big problems with THD. Not everything that looks like a harmonic actually is. And so you can discriminate by looking at the phases of the harmonics. Anything that meets law number five, zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees, those are harmonics. Those are guaranteed. If those are those are phase locked to your fundamental. But if it's some other phase, it's not a harmonic. It's noise. And those things come up, you know, you're pumping a one kilohertz signal through an amplifier and you get a five kilohertz signal from somewhere, who knows where. If it's exactly five kilohertz and you have exactly a one kilohertz signal coming in, you can assume that that 5 kilohertz is the fifth harmonic, but you better look at the phase first. If the phase is not one of those values, then it's not a harmonic. It could be noise. It could be some other signal leaking in. You don't know. But if it's not phase related, it's not a harmonic. Anyway, so look at my website, www.danbuller.com. Read my book if you have to. I don't make a lot of money on these, so I don't really care if you buy the book or not. But I want you to understand that everybody who's talking about harmonics, they're full of shit. This is Dan Bullard signing off.